So there's no hiding the fact that as a tech YouTuber and PC enthusiast, I've owned and worked with a bunch of systems over the years. From the humble mid tower like this one right here that was powered by a Ryzen 7 1700, a smaller boy similar to this one that still has that same 1700 chugging along, this massive boy over here that's still crushing it thanks to the Ryzen 7 3800XC, and then back to the mid tower meta with the system behind me currently rocking my Fantabulous 5800X. What all of these systems have in common, other than all of them running on Ryzen Magic, obviously, is that even the smallest of them still takes up a lot of space. They also all have graphics cards, which for a new builder are almost impossible to get right now for a price that isn't still a bit of a ripoff. Which is why AMD sponsored this video where we'll be taking a look at the tiniest, and I do mean tiniest PC, that I have ever worked with. Namely, ASRock's Desk Mini X300, equipped with the Ryzen 5 5600G to prove that your PC doesn't have to take up half of your desk or even have a dedicated graphics card to be a friggin' powerhouse. I'll be dropping links to the X300 along with the 5600G in the description down below, and if you're in South Africa and want to pick up any of the parts we'll be using today, be sure to check them out at Takelot, also linked down below. Now, the point of this video isn't to review any of the parts we'll be using here, but to show you just what a tiny system like this, equipped with a chip like the 5600G with integrated Radeon graphics, can really do. But even so, we've got to take a closer look at this little thing, because everything ASRock managed to stuff in here is kind of nutty. So let's get right on into it. Okay, so when I said this is the tiniest PC I've ever worked with, I was not exaggerating. This thing is about 15.5 centimeters deep, 15.5 centimeters high, eight centimeters in width. That is crazy small. And yeah, so I wanna see what's inside of this thing. So let's get that started. So all we need to do is remove these four screws. Now, once that's done, we should be able to just slide the system out thusly. Um, it would have slid out a lot better. It did the first time I opened this and don't judge the cable management because that is all my fault. So the CPU cooler over here itself is actually an additional extra that you'll have to pay for. Uh, if you want to use your own, you just have to make sure that it's under 46 millimeters in height, then it should fit in here. And speaking of additional extras, we'll start over here with my favorite one, which is a very decently sized strip for a case like this of uh, RGB LEDs and a massive 21 of them to be exact. That plugs into another additional extra that you can pay for, which is a USB hub. So this goes to our RGB, this goes to our motherboard, that leads us to this thing over here, which is another little add-on that you can buy, which is USB 2.0, um, two of those ports. But if you need a little bit more speed, we have what I think is a 3.1 port type A over here, along with a type C. So if you were to get like a USB hub, you would be just fine with those two. But in case you're not, we also have another USB 2.0 port in the back along with what I think is another 3.1. And then we also have VGA, uh, HDMI, DisplayPort, and our power. And that's actually another additional accessory over here. That is a rear audio jack. So that doesn't come with the bare bone system as far as I know. Uh, so if you have a sound system or like speakers you wanna plug into in the back, that's the way to do it. Moving on, we've got our storage over here, which is Crucial's P2 NVMe 500 gigs. Uh, 500 gigs, not ideal. I would upgrade that as soon as possible to at least a one terabyte. Then we've got two SODOM slots over here. And I believe we have 16 gigs in total of Crucial's 3200 CL22. And then just because I wanna actually see the beast, Let's take a look at the CPU itself. And there she is. So there is a full fat 5600G, the star of the show here. That is very, very cool to see on such a tiny, 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 tiny motherboard. So yeah, from the official product page, the board does support APUs from the Cezanne, Renoir, Picasso, and Raven Ridge generations of APUs. So pretty much anything that's out there already this thing can run it, and the upcoming ones as well. We've got our M.2 slot in the front, but we also have one 
on the rear of the board, which I think is super freaking cool. Somewhere on this side, there is room for another full fat M.2 drive. So you can rock two M.2 drives as well as if you look at these connectors here, there's one over here and one over here, and there are accessories in the box. Those are basically SATA ports. I think that about does it. Okay, so I'm gonna try to put all this back together. So let's switch back to future tank so we can see what this baby actually performs like. Well, if that didn't get you hyped to see what this tiny boy is really capable of, then I don't know what will. But before that, I wanna shine a quick spotlight on the heart of our little system over here, the Ryzen 5 5600G. Equipped with six cores and 12 threads and base and boost clock speeds of 3.9 and 4.4 gigahertz respectively, it's a fantastic pick for this system, especially at its current price of $210 or 4,500 Rand here in South Africa. What makes it an even better pick is that it comes packed with Radeon graphics built in, which is about as good as you're gonna get without a dedicated graphics card. The iGPU ships with seven cores and runs at a frequency of 1900 megahertz, and the whole CPU maxes out at a TDP of just 65 watts. Now, I've actually gone ahead and benchmarked the system before I took it apart, just so there is no chance that my fiddling with it messed with the numbers. So let's roll the results. And just as an appetizer, I wanted to see how fast Crucial P2 was gonna run in the system. And as Crystal Diskmark shows, it runs more than fast enough for most applications, at least when it comes down to sequential read and write speeds. The P2 is a great drive to pair with a system like this, providing decent transfer rates at a very budget-friendly price of just 53 bucks. And even without a dedicated heatsink, the drive stayed cool, hitting only a max temp of 51 degrees. Moving on to the stars of the show, the X300 and 5600G, I wanted to see how well they'd handle a creative application I use all the time, namely Photoshop. And it held its own against the 5600X surprisingly well, considering that the X version was tested on my main test bench with top of the range parts. I also did a quick test of Premiere Pro, and while editing was fine for the most part, without a dedicated graphics card, it did struggle a little bit with certain tasks. And while we're on the topic of creative tasks, I actually use the system as a secondary stream PC for a couple of streams over on my Twitch channel link down below. Feel free to drop by if you wanna add at least 69 more FPS to your system. And you know, it worked like a charm using the software encoder. So that's a great option for the system too. But look, I know what I wanna see most from this system and that's gaming performance, so let's roll it. And to kick things off, let's start with the games that this thing is built for, eSports titles. And man, does this system alleviate the sting of not being able to buy a graphics card. At 720p with the lowest settings, games like Apex Legends and Fortnite ran like a dream, with Fortnite even managing to hit a whopping average FPS of 160. And with performance like that, I felt like we had even more headroom to play around with. So for Rocket League, CSGO and Minecraft, I upped the resolution to 1080p and the results kind of speak for themselves. 85 to 105 FPS at 1080p with integrated graphics is kind of crazy. Especially in the case of Minecraft where I was able to like up the quality settings to high or max, though with some of the distance sliders turned down. And while not even one of the best iGPUs you can buy right now is built for it, you can even dip your toes into AAA gaming as long as you want a playable rather than pretty experience. At 720p with quality settings turned all the way down, both Doom Eternal and Forza Horizon 5 were able to hit an average FPS of 60 plus. And even though in Doom the 1% lows do hint at some stuttering, both were actually really enjoyable to play. And while I know some of you are gonna disagree with me on this, I think in slower paced sightseeing games, 30 FPS and above can still be totally playable. And in every other game I tested, the system managed to hit and even in some cases surpass that number. Cyberpunk understandably struggled the most out of all of the titles and bordered on unplayable in some high octane areas, while Elden Ring made the Soulsborne fan in me very happy by sticking to a relatively solid 42 FPS while also still looking dang good. All in all, these are really impressive numbers for an APU, especially in the few games where I was able to compare it to Team Blue's 12400 with its comparatively anemic UHD 730. And that performance didn't come at much of a power draw or temperature cost, with the chip maxing out at 70 watts and the special little ASRock cooler shockingly only allowing the chip to hit as high as 79 degrees. Though having essentially unimpeded airflow due to all the perforations on the side and top of the case probably helped a lot too. With temps and power clearly not being a problem and the 5600G not being locked down like the majority of its Team Blue competition, I figured why the heck not and went into the BIOS for some overclocking. I manually overclocked the CPU to 4.6 GHz on all cores, bumped our GPU clock from 1900 to 2200 MHz, 
upped RAM speed from 3200 to 3400 megahertz and set our Infinity Fabric clock to 1700. And that resulted in some pretty stellar results. I'm not gonna make charts for all of the games tested again because I don't want to, but I will make one chart showing the percentage differences from this overclock in each game. And just, wow, man. Our lowest improvement happened in Shadow of the Tomb Raider with a still very healthy 6.6% uplift. And at the other end of the scale, we have CSGO coming in with a mind-blowing 17.7% average FPS gain. With all the totals tallied up, that's an overall gain of 12.2%, just from that fairly simple overclock that took me all of like two minutes to dial in. That's a lot of gains. Whether overclocked or not, there's no denying that the 5600G and its built-in Radeon graphics, along with the X300, can absolutely tear through esports titles and pretty reliably play even some of the newest and prettiest games around. As long as you're okay with losing out on some of the eye candy. If you're not okay with lowering quality and resolution settings, you already have a gaming PC with a decent graphics card, and you're just looking for a teensy secondary or home theater PC, then you can still have your AAA cake and eat it too with this configuration. That's right, game streaming. Okay, so what we have going on here is I have my main system hooked up to this display over here, and I have the X300 system connected to this display. Now, just look at the friggin' size difference here. This is the mesh if I see, which I would consider a smallish case. And uh, yeah, yeah, not so small anymore. Anyway, we're gonna be streaming from this main PC to the X300, and we're gonna be doing Elden Ring for this because I am addicted. So we basically just press on the stream option here on Steam, and it should stream the game like we were playing it from the main system. Here we go. Elden Ring on the X300. Streaming from the main PC over here. Yeah, yeah, here we are. Atlas Plateau, running on both screens right now. One system streaming to the other one. This is really freaking cool. If there is any quality difference, I'm not really seeing it. And uh, delay wise, I don't think there is much, if any, at least not what I can perceive. Like, let's, let's just test that real quick. So, Yeah, this is, this is basically like just playing it from my main PC. This is, this is actually just really freaking cool. So the way I have this set up is I have both the main system and the X300 hooked up to Ethernet. And I have another Ethernet cable running all the way over to my living room setup where I have my TV and everything. And I've actually used the X300 there as an HTPC to stream this game and play from my couch. And it has been amazing. Overall, the X300 and 5600G impressed the crap out of me. The size of this system alone makes it super convenient to put basically anywhere, whether out of sight or in full view where it looks awesome. Even more so if you get the optional RGB strip. And if you don't opt for some RG bling, I can see it being ideal for anyone looking for an extremely minimalist work system. It's also proven to be a pretty impressive little gaming system, whether you're playing games right off the 5600G or whatever other Radeon equipped Ryzen chip you want to toss into it, or streaming your favorite game running max settings and high FPS from your main system to your couch setup. It's also a dang decent system for creative work like Photoshop and can even serve as a very budget friendly dedicated streaming PC. And speaking of, I just realized I never actually mentioned how much this thing costs. So uh, here goes. For the bare bones kit with the case, motherboard, CPU cooler, and Wi-Fi gear like included, you'll be paying about $205. As for this exact configuration we're using here with the 5600G, crucial memory and SSD, and all the other optional accessories minus the vase amount kit included, the total cost only comes out to $380. That's $380 for a very powerful little system and one with some impressive gaming performance to boot. Sure, you might be able to cobble together a system with similar-ish specs for around the same price if you're lucky or you're good at finding deals, but I can pretty much guarantee that it won't be this small and definitely not anywhere near as cool as this one. So, big thanks to AMD for sponsoring this video and letting me play around with this tiny beast of a machine. And if you wanna check out the 5600G or ASRock's X300, be sure to follow the links down below. And if you're in South Africa, check them out at Takealot, also linked down below. And big thanks to everyone watching. Hit the like button for more videos like this, get subscribed so you don't miss an upload, and let me know what you think about the X300 down in the comments below. So yeah.
See you in the next one.